Good morning. We're going to start our, our uh, song, our worship service with the song, and then uh, we'll have a brief announcement from uh, Chris. <clears throat> oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days. Good morning church. Welcome everyone that's with us here this morning and welcome on Facebook as well. Um, God bless. We want to make sure everyone here this morning, if you are comfortable and you are vaccinated, you do not have to have a mask on as long as you practice social distancing with those that aren't comfortable or aren't wearing a mask. So if they're not vaccinated. So if you are vaccinated, you are free to show us your face. So we're excited about that. Uh, also, this is the last month that we will be uh, live broadcasting, just a reminder that we will go to uh, post uh, broadcasting. Uh, we'll record the message or we'll, we'll record the service and we will post it on YouTube after the fact, shortly afterwards. So, and then those of you that may be in the back notice, we got a sample recording going on today, so we're trying, trying to see how that sound looks. Um, just a couple announcements to add to the prayer list uh, that came. We're, um, after the print, printing of the prayer list, uh, Ronnie Thompson's uh, mother passed in Florida or in uh, Tennessee, and uh, Ron, while they were down there, so uh, Ronnie's and family need to be kept in prayers as they deal with that. 
as well as um, just a, a freak accident to uh, uh, Denise Nim's mother, Doris. Uh, was in a vehicle that uh, she was stepping out of the vehicle and jumped out and it jumped in out of park on her and she tried to stop the vehicle from rolling, an 85 year old woman. Unfortunately, she wasn't very successful in stopping, well, she might have been successful stopping the vehicle, but she had a lot of physical damage, uh, a number of problems, and we'll talk more about those later. But let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers. She's in Grand Rapids, um, undergoing a lot of um, surgeries and, and, uh, and assistance, so let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers as well as Denise as she deals with that uh, tragic situation. So. Just want to make sure our children get their bulletins. Three and up and seven and up, there are green and yellow bulletins for children to follow along with services, as well as activities. And I think that's it for the major announcements. We'll get back to our song service, and then uh, when we close out service, we'll have some individual prayers. So. Just note that on the uh, your reopening schedule is in the bulletin, and this is the first week for handouts of bulletins and songbooks are back in the pews. So we're getting back to back to as close to normal as normal can be. So again, thank you everybody for being here, and thank you for being with us online. And we, we hope you enjoy worship service. Okay. He leadeth me. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, He me by his own hands he leadeth me his faithful father I will be for by his hand he leadeth me sometimes mid sea of deepest gloom sometimes where he does bowers bloom by water still for trouble see still tis God's hand that leadeth me he leadeth me he leadeth me by his Father, I would be for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, if death's cold wave I will not flee. Saints, God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. For his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful father I would be. For by his hand he leadeth me. The next song is Pass Me Not. And, uh, all right. Nope. Sorry, I got to stop that, guys. Where could I go? Living below 
in this so sinful world. Hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? It is so good to be back with you guys. It's been a long time for me, and we know what COVID has done to us. But I'm so glad that the Lord is always in power and always will make a chance for us to come together and worship him in spirit and truth. I'm going to read the scripture that was chosen. And it comes from Galatians, the fifth chapter and the first verse. Galatians 5 and 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you for what you've been doing for us ever since you made man. Father, you've been good to us, and so much so that you gave your only begotten Son, that through him, people can be saved if they follow the words and the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we ask prayers for those who are sick among us and were not able to make it. And prayer for those, Father, who may not be ill but still have a uh, reasonable thought about this virus that's still going around. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless all the churches of Christ and that you bless all of those who call on the name of Jesus for him to be in their lives. Father, it's not for us to judge, we know a lot of us do, but it's not for us to judge, Father. It's for us to love and you, the one that saves. Father, we thank you so much 
And we ask, Father, that you bless this congregation and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, I'm crying, Savior. Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, trusting only in thy merit, I see thy face, thou the spoken spirit, take me by thy grace, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my not pass me by, thou the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me, whom have I on earth beside thee, whom in heaven I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Lamb of God will be the song before communion. <clears throat> Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon. And to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, your gift of love, they crucified, they laughed and stole him as he died, the humble king, they Sacrifice the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. 
you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, Paul preached unto them until tomorrow. He also continued his speech until midnight, saying, For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many asleep. Let us give thanks for the bread. Father, we come giving thee grace and we come giving thee thanks, and we come giving thee honor and praise that your son went to the cross on Calvary and died and was buried and was raised again and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father who is in heaven. Father, as we take this bread that represents the, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray that we will take it according to the divine will and in line with the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us give thanks for the blood. Father, in continuing our prayer, we pray that we would take this cup that represents thy son's shed blood that was shed on the Christ on the cross of Calvary for the remissions of sin of this world and all mankind. We pray that we would take it in accordance with our divine will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. 
And Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. God has blessed us beyond measure with all the sickness that has gone all over the world. Perhaps some of our loved ones has left this time side of life. But God has still smiled on us to let us remain here on earth on this time side of life. He has provided everything that we have. He will continue to provide for us as we stand in need. A lot of times we may not have what we want, but we always have what we need through the grace of our Lord and Savior. It's time to give a part of what God has blessed us with. Not only our finances, but our time and also our talents. There are ways that we can give if we are not in the presence of the assembly this morning. First, we can give in person, which those of us that are present this morning in the house of God can give. Second, we can give at www.homesroad.org and click the blue button to give. Third, we can text the amount that we want to give by texting 517-939-0079. And also at the church office, which is open Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 to noon. And you can also mail your contribution to Holmes Road Church of Christ, 321 East Home Road, Lansing, Michigan, 48910. Let us pray for the offering. Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to rise out of our beds and to put our feet on the floor to face another brand new day and come to the house of praise to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Not only in spirit and in truth, Father, but we come just giving thanks for you being who you are. Father, we thank you for not judging us as our sins deserve, but by your grace and mercy do we have a chance to live with thee in heaven forever. Father, we ask that you will bless this offering, bless those that are here this morning, bless our finances, bless our coming in and our going out. And Father, most of all, thank you for everything that you have provided for us from our early existence until this present moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way 
for me. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord, He'll find a way for me. The Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. The Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord, He'll find a way for me. Won't it be grand to hear Him say, Well done. Won't it be grand to hear Him say, If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, won't it be grand to hear him say, well done. Well, good morning, church. Good to see everyone here. I uh, first of all, I know we're a little bit low in numbers today, but I also know that we got a lot of people traveling, enjoying summer. We have people in Tennessee, we have people in Texas, we have people scattered around the state. I know people who have been in Indiana, Illinois. We're, a lot of our church is gone this holiday weekend, but we have returned. <laughs> so I am glad to be back. Thank you for letting us go away on vacation. It's our first vacation in two years because of COVID, and it was good and needed to get away. Amen. Uh, some of you may say, but you took a spring break last year. Yeah, we did, but that was just to take Mark to school. That was no vacation. That was sad. That was, uh, that was emotional. So, but this was a good vacation. We needed it, and it was good to get away. I never been, had been to Boston or Maine before, and we did both those, and it was, it was a great time of education and fun and and seeing history, it was an exciting time. I, if you've never been to Boston, I encourage you. We did the Freedom Trail, that whole two and a half mile hike. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot, saw the, uh, it, was just, it was a great time. But thank you for letting us do that. But today is Independence Day. Today is July 4th. Today is the day that we celebrate our freedoms in America. We say, that's what we say, but the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, we call it Independence Day, but what are we really independent of? You know, Independence Day, when we hear the term Independence Day, it's kind of misleading because I am not an independent person. I'm very dependent on God. I'm dependent on Jesus Christ, and I'm dependent on each and every one of my church brothers and sisters. And I'm dependent on the need for my brothers and sisters in Christ. To encourage me in my daily walk. So I'm a very dependent person. And so we tend to celebrate the wrong thing on Independence Day. Like we're independent. No we're not. Not really. What we are independent of is that we declared independence from British tyranny. That's what Independence Day is about. It's saying we're no longer going to pay taxes to Britain and the king and honor the king with our taxes. That's what Independence Day is really about. It's the day that we celebrate, that we remember when the colonists decided they were no longer going to give in to the burden of oppression, of British taxation and rule. And just coming from Boston, I saw the site of the Boston Massacre. I saw the site of the Boston Tea Party. We were there. And, it, and we saw the rebellion that people started to feel against Britain and their rule. And that's what we come to say we're independent of. That's what we celebrate on July 4th, is being independent nation, not having to govern by a king or some other authority or pay some foreign country our taxes. But we all know that the independence that the United States has from Britain did not come at a cheap or easy price. There was many lives lost. 
so that we could have our freedoms that we share today in America, we need to remember that there was a huge price paid. In the Civil War, there were 620,000 people that were killed in the American Civil War. In World War II, 405, 399 American casualties for World War II. In World War I, 116,516 were killed. In the Vietnam, 58,209. Korean War, 36,516. In the American Revolutionary War that we just talked about against Britain, there were about 25,000 that were killed in that one. In the War of 1812, there was 20,000 killed in that one. In the Mexican-American War, there were 13,000 killed. On the War of Terror, which is almost currently still going, 7,057. The Spanish-American War, 2,446. And the Gulf War, 258. And so therefore, official numbers, so to speak, there are over 1,304,684 soldiers that have lost their lives in battle so that we can have our independent country. We do celebrate a lot of freedoms that other countries don't have, and we have this because people paid a price. And then there's also, on top of that, there's an extra 539,000 that the military says has died that is not military or not combat related. And so nearly 2 th million people have lost their lives to give us, to serve us, the kind of freedoms that we have today, the freedom we have to assemble right now, to worship our God is because we have these two million people who have died for these freedoms that we enjoy. And all of that is something I appreciate. All of that I look at and I say, wow, on this 4th of July I look at that and I look at our nation and I say, that's such a price. Two million lives given so that we can have a country that gives us these kind of freedoms. And most of those men and women that have died in those numbers, most of them were young. These are, these are not older people. These are people that have most of their lives ahead of them. And they died in battle for our freedoms. Two million. Think of all the loved ones left behind to mourn. To, to, to know that they're never going to see those loved ones again. These two mean people, they serve with pride and honor and integrity so that me and you can enjoy the freedom that we have today. We walk in the freedom that they provided. But with all of that and with all the thankfulness that I want to show them on this July 4th, one thing I, I know for certain is none of those two million, none of them, have the power to save my soul. They gave me great freedom in America, and I thank them for that, and I honor them for that, but they are not worthy of the kind of worship I need to give to Jesus Christ, who's the only one who can save my soul. Amen. See, Jesus gave us spiritual liberty. See, those men, those women that, that died in these wars and all the things we've gone through, they've given us some physical liberty here, but that's only short-lived. That's only going to last 80, 80, 90, 100 years or so in my lifetime. But spiritual liberty, that's forever. And that's what Jesus Christ has, came to do. See, all of us had a debt that we could not pay. Every single person here has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we needed something to rescue us. We were all in bondage. We were all in prison. Not one person in all of the world has ever escaped the bondage of sin. We're all trapped and oppressed and taken over by sin. And nothing awaits us. But hell, do you realize that? Hell is what all of us deserve because of our sin. Condemned, we all stood. Every one of us 
do not have the right to be with God in eternity. But Jesus Christ, one person, one God that took the form of a human flesh who said equality with God was not something to be grasped, but took the lowest form and became a human so that he could understand what we went through, died for us. And because of that, we received freedom from sin. And let me tell you, that was the most costly price there is. Look at Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. In Romans 5, 6 through 8 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, folks, all those people who died to give us those, those freedoms that we now enjoy in America... We thank them for that and thank you for the freedoms and thank you for your service. But no one can save my soul other than Jesus Christ. And so today on this 4th of July, as people are exploding fireworks and grilling out with their families, enjoying hot dogs, hamburgers, apple pie, enjoying American movies, all this stuff, let us not forget the person who truly gives us the only freedom we need, and that's Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 1, 18-19, Peter writes, For as much as we know that we are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. See, folks, if we want true spiritual liberty, if we want true freedom... From the, from the prison of sin and everything, anything, if we want true freedom, the only way you're going to find that is in Jesus Christ because Jesus is the one who sets us free. He fought the spiritual war, the one that's important, the one that no one else can fight. We can't get up an army of made of people to fight that fight. Jesus was the only one who could fight it. Did you catch it? The, he was the perfect lamb. No blemish. See, that's what it took. It took perfection of God to beat my sin. No person can do that other than Jesus Christ. He paid the price that I should have paid. He paid separation from God. Remember on the cross, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They had to split because he took my sin. On him. And God had to separate for the only time in all of eternity. They separated because of my sin. He paid the price. See, that's what hell is. Hell is separation. God, if you are not saved in Jesus Christ and you die, God is going to separate from you. That's what hell is. It's a place where God is not. And God says, I paid that. I paid the price. And because of that, we have liberty. We have true freedom from sin. Jesus Christ is the only one. He provided me with my spiritual freedom from the laws of sin and death. And that's why we say, death, where is thy sting? You don't scare me no more. Death is no longer something to be scared about and worried about as Christian. We look forward to the passage into eternity. That's the Christian view of death. There is no worry about it anymore because Christ has taken it all away. He gave me eternal life. And therefore, let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. Therefore, you who have received Christ Jesus the Lord, look at this, walk in him. If you've received Jesus Christ, every one of you who have been baptized and received the gift of the Holy Spirit and had your sins forgiven, he he just said, if you do that, if you've done that, if if you're living there, if you received Christ, walk in Him. Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught and overflowing with faithfulness. Folks, 
When you're free, you need to walk like a free man. That's what it just said. And so if we are Christians, we need to walk like a Christian. I think so much of the pressure of our culture today is keeping Christians too quiet. We need to stand up and say, forget what culture says. I'm going to do what God says. Because I'm going to walk like the free man Jesus has made me and not like the quiet shut up that the culture wants me to be. We need to walk in liberty that Jesus gave us. We need to stand up and be counted for Jesus because he's the one that gave us freedom. We need to walk in the faith. Not to keep our faith hidden, but walk it. We need to build ourselves up and others because of Jesus Christ. We need to walk in overflowing thankfulness to Jesus Christ because he has set me free. That's what Independence Day ought to be. That's what we should be celebrating today. Yes, we have a great country. Yes, many people have given their lives for it. But Jesus Christ is the one that has truly made me free. And I need to walk in that freedom. And I need to walk in his word and the way he tells me to be. Because that's where my ultimate thankfulness needs to be. Romans 8, chapter 1 through 4 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an amen? We are not condemned. We, our sins we commit, they're not going to send us to hell because Jesus says, you're in me, I'll take care of it. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who has given life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Savior, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. If you're free today because of Jesus Christ, we don't walk by the lust of our flesh. We walk by the Spirit that leads us. Only Jesus has the ability to give us this kind of freedom. All those soldiers that paid a price to give me the earthly and physical world freedoms that I enjoy in this world, I say thank you. And I appreciate it. And I give you honor. But not the way I give Jesus honor. Only Jesus can give me the spiritual freedom from sin. That I have. And that I need to have eternal life in heaven. And because of him. I can say I am free indeed. John chapter 8 36. So if the son sets you free. You will be free Indeed, if you want to be free, indeed, you can do so today. See, you may be free in America, but you aren't free from hell unless you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can fix that today. You can make this Independence Day your true dependence on Jesus Christ for salvation and eternal life. You can do that today. Our baptistry is ready. If you want to be baptized into him, let us know. If you want to study more, let us know. If you are struggling with some, something in your life, Come forward and let us know. If you're out there in virtual world, we, by the way, we're only going to have virtual world for about another month. In August 1st, we're going to shut off the live broadcast and we're going to go to it just a posting of it uh, later. But right now you're still live. So if you're out there and you want a prayer request, type away. We have people on Facebook monitoring. We'll get your prayer request. Whatever your need is, now is the time to respond. So let us stand and sing this great song together. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, so haste to its spring. Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the 
fountain free will you come tis for you and me thirsty soul hear the welcome call tis a fountain open for all there's a living stream with the crystal gleam from the throne of life now it flows while the waters roll let the weary soul hear the call that forth freely go will you come to the fountain free will you come tis for you and me thirsty soul oh hear the welcome call to the fountain open for all there's a rock that's cleft and no soul is left that may not its pure water share. Tis for you and me and its stream I see. Let us hasten joyfully there. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis the fountain open for all. Hello again, church. Um, if you are visiting with us, I failed to recognize you are our honored guest, so thank you for being here. Uh, if you are visiting with us, please uh, stick around and let us get to know you. Uh, we don't, haven't got our visitors' cards uh, back in the pews yet, but we'll, we'll get that going. So, A um, couple of things to, to read and, and talk about here real quick. Um, Please look at our prayer list. As a matter of fact, we want to look at it right now and just 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 glance through some of the things. Larry Coppage is is asking requests prayers for his wife Cindy uh, as she deals with her health. JD's requesting prayers for his nephew James Wilson uh, suffering with colon uh, his colon and you know and his hospitalized eyes. Carol Pace uh, she needs prayers for cancer surgery. Roger Lewis requests prayers for his uh, brother-in-law, Ralph. Uh, Grace Bowling uh, is asking for prayers for healing uh, from, from shingles. Marilyn is here today. She's not in the hospital, like the bulletin says, so, and she's not at home. So her and Ray are here, and we're glad to see them. Um, so all our travelers, we have many, as Stan mentioned, many, many people traveling. Uh, so we want to keep them in our prayers throughout the day. Raina Berry's cousin, Melissa Hernandez. She's struggling with some stage four cancer. Sylvia Pade, three-year-old cousin, Dakota. She's in chemo treatment for cancer. Annette Gentry, going through chemo treatment. Faye Surratt, we talked to Pat this morning. Faye's actually doing better and better each day. Um, they're getting her out, moving her around, and she's we hope to see her back here. I don't know. We hope to see her back in the building. So, uh, and Willie Blair. We want to keep Willie. Of course, I see Willie right there. So Willie's here today. So good to see Willie and his family. And again, we added uh, Ronnie Thompson uh, for the loss of his mother. And Denise, I, I wanted to read just so that you're aware of the the extent of the injuries that Denise's mother went through. Uh, she has fractures in both feet. And there, and there is no skin left from her left knee to her ankle. It was so bad, they had to take the right, her right into surgery to clean in all the debris and try to clean up 
the wound. She's going to need skin grafts done, and, she, and she'll have to go to May in beds and free beds in Grand Rapids for rehab and to learn how to walk again, 85 years old. All of, all of her dressing changes have to be done in surgery. See, due to the pain. She's in good spirits, considering. Uh, I don't know how she's in good spirits, but that's, may the God grace be with her. So Amen. we'll keep, uh, we'll keep Doris uh, in our prayers and you, Denise, as we, as we uh, go about our service. And then we received a card from Janda. The greater your storm, the brighter your rainbow. Dear Holmes Road family, the storm was great for our family following the death of my brother Scott. Your hugs, cards, texts, and kind fellowship were a tremendous comfort. We love you so. Sincerely, Janda, Stan, Luke, Mark, and Matt. That will be posted in the bulletin. Stan, great message today. Appreciate that. Lots of sacrifice, but only one sacrifice that means anything to any of us. Our Lord and Savior. So. It is 4th of July, and we ask that if you are participating in fireworks, or, or uh, that you be careful, be safe. Um, hopefully uh, enjoy your afternoon together with your families. Hopefully everybody's going to have a good time. And, uh, and uh, the weather's supposed to be a little warm, so stay cool if you can. Stay hydrated, but have fun. Um, that's all the announcements I have. So with that, we'll go to a closing prayer. And, okay. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we, we come before you this morning just lifting all those mentioned up in prayer. Father, there are so many who are hurting, so many that are hurting from sickness and death and from injuries and and lord we just pray that your your healing hands comfort them that they search you and they look out to you for the answers lord that you provide them the comfort that only you can provide and if it's in your will that you grant their wishes as they so pray father god we thank you so much for this worship service this opportunity to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ and to lift our voice to you and to sing songs and to honor you and to praise you and to glorify you. We just pray that our worship service was uplifting to those gathered here and was pleasing in your sight. Father, thank you for your son. That sacrifice he made on that cross, that ultimate sacrifice that means so much to so many, but yet so few. Father, help us to, to make that few more. Help us to reach out and find those who are lost in need of, of learning of the sacrifice your son made. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've blessed us with. We thank you for the members gathered here, and we thank you for the members on our airways. We thank you for our visitors, and we thank you for uh, anyone that is within the sound of my voice, Lord, and we just pray that that you be with us during this holiday season, or this holiday, and that you give us comfort, and you give us joy, and you give us rest as we spend time with family and friends. Thank you, Father, for today, and thank you for your Son, and it's in his blessed name that I ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. You are free to go. Thank <laughs> you.